square eggs. So recently I had this problem. See, I needed a pair of track pants. And this was like urgently needing a pair of track pants. No time to order online and wait for the stuff to arrive. I needed track pants now. So, what do you do when you need track pants now? You shop locally. And the first place I went to look for track pants was a local thrift store. And while I'm there searching for track pants, I was like, well, might as well hit up my usual spots in this thrift store as well to see if there's anything fun to buy. Check out the electronics aisle to look for cameras that have film in it. Nothing as usual. Take a stroll through the kitchenware aisle looking for some cast iron stuff, which lately has just been a fool's errand because like a year or so ago, this particular thrift store has caught on and now any piece of garbage cast iron is just cake full of trash where you can't even make out the brand on it, which is like start at like $35 and up. It's kind of ridiculous, but whatever. I'm still gonna check because maybe, just maybe I'll find something, you know? Wayne Gretzky, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Well, on this particular day, I'm walking down the kitchenware aisle and I see this little tiny cast iron pan for $2.49. Okay, I expected it to just be some piece of trash, you know, poorly manufactured garbage cast iron pan, whatever, but I pick it up anyway and what do I see on the back, staring me in the face? The old Griswold logo right there. Right there, not even hidden under years of grime. This is a Griswold pan for $2.49 at a place that's been overpricing cast iron pans. I'm like, what the hell? I took a shot and I hit it. But, 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 but. Then I noticed well, it's underneath the logo, and my life has not been the same since. You see what it says? It says, I'm already shaking. It says, since 1865, and then, square egg skillet. Square egg, square egg, square egg, square eggs. I don't know about you, but in my entire adult life, I am not certain that I've ever eaten a square egg. And I sure as hell have not prepared a square egg at home. So my mind is just, I'm, I'm, I'm just flabbergasted. Square eggs, square f***ing eggs. If you don't understand why I'm so frazzled about this, have you ever tried to make a fried egg sandwich? They're delicious, but there's a problem with a fried egg sandwich in that how do you make it so that the egg fits nicely on the sandwich? You could smash an egg into a big round pan and get a big round egg and then when you put the round egg on the square toast, it doesn't line up, it's round on square. Like this is, this is basic pegging logic that they teach you in kindergarten with that pegging game. Or what else can you do? You're like, oh, well maybe if I scramble the eggs up some, then like I can spread it on the toast like some kind of perverse egg jelly to average out the amount of egg per toast slice, but hey, and then what happens is you pick up your, your your scrambled egg jelly fried egg sandwich, take a bite into it, and it's like, oh, half the egg falls out because it's not one fully connected egg mass in the middle of the sandwich. It's, it, it's, it's for ever I thought this was a problem that couldn't be solved. But, th but, 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 but look at the old square egg pan. Take a piece of standard American bread and, and, and our standard egg pan. Look at that. Look at it's like a one-to-one -one fit. You, you, you make an egg in this square egg pan, it is gonna use every perfect inch of this bread to make the world's greatest fried egg sandwich. I thought this was an unsolvable problem I've had with my sandwiches, but here we go. Somebody who's probably been dead well before I was born invented the square egg pan and solved this. And I had no idea. It's what they say, like, you don't know what you don't know until you know you don't know it. I didn't know you could make a square egg. Oh, so we're gonna make ourselves some damn fine square egg sandwiches and blow my mind. But before we can make a square egg sandwich, so you can see this pan's a little rusty, it, it needs some work. I don't believe that rust is an essential vitamin or mineral. So I'm gonna have to restore this pan first before I can have my day of days with a square egg. 
fried sandwich. So let's, let's, let's take a while and fix this thing up good and proper. So the first thing we need to do to get this pan in tip top shape is take care of this rust that is appeared in the corners here. The back looks fine, but the middle's got some dirty spots. To do that, I've assembled a few of my random scrub-a-dub dubs I found around my house, and we are gonna give this pan a little soak in about a 50-50 mixture of water and vinegar. Oh, it's so wet. Okay, so we're just gonna let this soak for about 10 minutes, and then I'll come back and it's time to our muscle my way through this rust. Alrighty, it's been about 10 minutes. Let's get our scrub-a-dub-dub -dub on. Which implement do I start with? We'll go with the old trusty green, green scratchy and see how that, if that works this rust off. Ooh, look at that. It's be coming off all right. Maybe I don't have to do scrub too hard. I'll be pretty happy because scrubbing kind of sucks. Let's, oh, scrub, scrub, scrub till the water turns brown. <laughs> oh. Let's try, let's try Mr. Hardcore Steel here. Oh, the water's turning brown. I'm so happy. Oh, this is looking pretty good. I'm happy. Okay. A little bit on the handle. Okay, I'm gonna call that good enough. The internet, which shall not be trusted, said that after you hit it with vinegar, you should put baking powder, baking soda on it too. <laughs> Crunchy baking soda to kind of offset the pH of the vinegar so it doesn't wreck your cast iron or something. I don't know if that's true. You can't really trust the internet, but we're just gonna do it anyways. And there's no chance of this burning my house down. So what harm does it do? Oh my God, rock, rock baking soda. I need new baking soda. This stuff is old and crunchy. Oh, look at that. It's like a science experiment. All right, let's rinse this off and dry it. And I think we will be good to proceed to step two. For step two, I'll need to acquire a very powerful item known as the good shit. Okay, I'm at a secret location where there's some people in this building back here. I gotta do some dealings get me the good shit. A little nervous, but I've been watching and I haven't seen any police, so wish me luck. So what is the good shit, you might ask? Why, yellow cap, easy off, oven cleaner. And what makes this the good shit? Why lie? You know, lie. It used to be in all sorts of soap, which I guess is why back in the olden days, they said never wash your cast iron stuff in soap because the lye reacts with the seasoning in the pan and chews it off. But they don't put lye in soap anymore, so you gotta go buy this yellow cap oven cleaner. So what we're gonna do is just put the pan in a bag, hose it with this shit, and then set it outside for a while and let it eat all the old seasoning off that square egg pan. You ready? Let's go spraying. And since this stuff is hella more dangerous, safety first, it's spray time. There's already rusty blood on my fingers like I murdered someone. So we're gonna let that sit there for many hours and then come back to it and see how much of the old seasoning has been destroyed by the, the lye. Square egg pan has now been suffering in this bag of lye for six hours now. Let's peel it open and see what kind of job it's done so far. <laughs> oh, look at that. 
Look at that nasty, nasty. All right, let's give it a rinse and a scrub and see how much of the previous seasoning has been removed. Oh. Ugh, I'm nasty, nasty boy. Well, look at that, look at that. It's... Look at that, it's, it's, after six hours, most of the seasoning, like all the seasoning on the inside is gone. There's just some thick bits left on the outside that I can't seem to scrape off yet. So I'm gonna pat it down, dry it up once again, and just let it soak in another lye bath. And then when I come back, it should be done and ready to be seasoned. Go. So after the second spray down of lye and a little more scrub-a-dub-dub -dub to get the little bit remaining rust off it that was still on the pan, it is now as naked as the day it was born. Look at this gray beauty. Now that we have achieved this totally nude, not safe for work version of the pan, it's time to put some clothes back on her. To do the seasoning, I'm just gonna follow a few simple steps. Number one, Put our naked pan into an oven at 200 degrees for about 20 minutes or so until it warms up. Step two, pull out the warm nude pan from the oven and give it a good rub down of Crisco oil so it can start soaking in these oils into the cast iron itself. And then before putting it back in the oven, just give it a wipe off of all the excess. We're gonna put this on thin, thin, thin at a time. Then when it's in there, we turn it up to about 300 degrees, pull it back out, any oil that's sweated out, just wipe that up as well because we don't want oily lumps clumping on our nice smooth square egg surface. That wouldn't be cool. Then I forgot what step we're on, but we put it back into the oven, crank it up to 450 degrees and let it bake for an hour. After that hour, we pull it out, lower the temperature back down to 200 degrees and repeat over and over and over until the pan looks like this. A beautiful, newly seasoned skillet that is just, just like it came off the production line 60 some, 80, how many years ago this was made. But now, with the seasoning done, it is heralded in the final step of this adventure, the egging. Oh! <laughs> Here we go, after long last, it is time for square eggs. Start the heat, boys. Oh, you feel that? Ow, fuck, this pan is hot. Let's get some lubrication in there. We are, we are so close to square eggs, I can't even lubricate. Get greasy, my little pan, get greasy. This is the moment I've been waiting for my entire life. There it goes, square egg number one. Look at this. It's like the egg you've always known growing up, but now it's square. Oh my God. This is, uh, oh, uh, this is like, this is how my parents felt when like we landed people on the moon. Just in awe. Can I flip my square egg? Look at this. Cast iron, just silky smooth. Whoop, oh, oh shit. Oh, fuck. Well, we're making kind of a square egg omelet. I kind of goofed that up. But here we go. It's still gonna be absolutely delicious. It's still kind of square. And as you know, egg in any shape tastes the same and is awesome. Okay, one more attempt at flipping this. Oh, yeah. Get a little feather on there. Oh, yeah. It's still square. After all of my mangling of this egg, it is still Square. Let's take it off the heat and get this onto some bread. Oh, square egg me. Da, 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 da. Look, at, look at that. Look at that. I mean, I'm kind of using this modern, like, panoramic 16 by 9 ratio bread when the egg is kind of the old school 4 by 3 or 4 by 4, I guess. It's a square. <laughs> but damn, if that's not a good looking egg sandwich. Let's give this a try. Square 
egg! This is everything I ever hoped a square egg sandwich would be! But, I think we can do better. We can make, we can make a square egg sandwich fit for a king! This is gonna blow your minds, everyone out there in square egg sandwich land. Oh, that's hot. That's sparking. So first off, this is kind of a deeper pan than I expected. So we're gonna go with not one, but two eggs. That's right, a two egg egg sandwich. You know who eats two eggs at once? A king. That's why it's a sandwich for a king. So now we let this just kind of cook up, do the omelet thing, you know? Pull the sides in so that the egg can flow around and cook all around it. Let me break up these yolks a little bit. Just let that, let that chill for a moment. I think, I think I can do it. I think I can flip this square egg patty. Here we go. Oh! Flipping the square egg is kind of being the hardest part, I've noticed. But does it really matter? Because look, you can just always reposition your square egg back into a square and have that perfect square omelet patty for your king's square egg sandwich. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Oh, I did it! A perfect flip. A perfect flip for the square egg sandwich. But now we need to make it truly for a king. So first thing we need to add, one of my all time favorite egg toppings that no one ever agrees with me, but you all got wool over your eyes, the pepperoncini. I'm telling you, try it. It's amazing on eggs. And then we're gonna, we're gonna take some hot peppers and hot pepper this up. Look at that, oh. And then, oh, what comes next, buddy? Pinch of salt. And finally, let's seal all the flavor in with a slice of cheese and then we're gonna cover it so it melts the cheese and just creates the perfect square egg sandwich patty. Ooh, look at that. We've got mostly melted cheese, but that's good enough for me. Let's get this on some bread. Oh my God, is that just not in frickin' credible? Just look at that. The square egg sandwich fit for a king. So I foresee this $2.49 investment I made getting a lot of heavy use in my future as I make more and more square egg sandwiches in the future. So I hope you enjoyed this adventure. If you made it this far, why not like, cause that pushes the video to other people and they can see square eggs and learn the truth about square eggs. And then subscribe because it's awesome. And then while I work on my skill of flipping the perfect square egg without ripping it all to shreds, Here's a previous video I did on a cast iron pan a few years ago, and then also something else that YouTube thinks you might like based on the algorithm. Later!